Hey everybody, Dave here, also known as the fit old guy now, or as one of the kids chose to call me the other day, Geriatric Joe, after Joe Wicks. Well, I'll take it as a compliment for now. Anyway, uh, I promised you one of three talks, either happiness, exercise, or food, and particularly living well forever without a diet and a cookery book. So, I was quite reluctant to do the food one because I thought, oh my God, we're all in lockdown. The last thing people are going to want to talk about is food because I'm guessing we all want loads of chocolate and toast, etc., etc. But I thought better of it. It's an emotional subject. It takes up a lot of our lives. And most importantly, we're absolutely rammed with loads of contradictory information. There's a plethora of advice online, in the press. We've got everybody to listen to from Weight Watchers, to Slimmer's World, to Joe Wicks himself, to Michael Mosley. I mean, you name it. The, the amount of advice out there is horrendous. And what do we do? Do we start eating more superfoods, the broccolis, the blueberries? Do we start putting oat milk in our coffee? My view of all that is it's what I would call, and I'm going to coin a phrase today, a load of bollocksology. And I'm hoping to use that word a bit more because it's satisfying and it kind of describes a lot of the stuff we're fed about food. So I'm going to start off today by saying that in my view, food importantly is only made up of three things. Yes, yes, I know there are hundreds and thousands of chemicals and vitamins and minerals but I don't want to get hung up on whether you're having enough zinc to absorb your vitamin C or whether your hair is going to stop falling out because you're eating enough calcium. What we need to do is tr try and get the big stuff right first, okay? So this is how I see food and I hope you'll agree. It's only made up of three things and they are called the macronutrients. So we've got proteins over here, essentially meat, anything with two eyes, chicken, eggs, etc. And for the vegetarians and vegans amongst you, you've got the, the beans and pulses, you know, the soyas, etc. as well. Uh, this side, we've got fats, which I think in, intuitively we all know. We know there are good and bad ones. But in the middle, we've got the most controversial ones, which are called the carbohydrates or the carbs. And we need these three macronutrients in the right proportion of our diet for us. And again, there's so much variable in information. And if I make a, an actual prescriptive recommendation of how much you should have had, have of each, then I'll probably get a telling off. But essentially, if you start Googling this, most websites will suggest that you eat 40 to 60 percent of this probably about 10 to 30 percent of protein and about 20 ish percent of fat so i am going to be prescriptive i'm sorry but i could just say do whatever you feel like but we have to have a starting point point. and for me i think it's going to be 20 40 and 40 Okay, um, now it does matter, particularly with the carbohydrates, what that 40% is made out of, because this is where the world's been going wrong. Um, so essentially from about, you know, when agriculture became industrialized, we've had a, you know, we've had plenty of food, more than we can eat. And we've had... Um, we've been under the misconception that these ones down here, which I think the BBC called the beige carbs, are what carbs are. Uh, they are carbs, but carbs are every other food that is not protein and is not fat. Yes, they've all got a little bit of each in, by the way. You can't pick up a food and say it's all that. But this is where things are going wrong. Your carbohydrates are a great food stuff. They're a great energy source. They're a speedy energy source. But because of the industrialization of agriculture and the cheapness, we've come to see these beige ones as our staple. 
And if you walk down the high street now and you want a takeaway, well, you can't walk down any high street now, but in normal times, if you want a takeaway, it's surely going to be made up of this gunk here. And probably so are your meals. You're probably going to have cereal and toast for breakfast, followed by a sandwich at lunchtime, followed by a pasta-based or rice-based meal at night. These are, however, what I would call sport foods, okay? They're the sort of thing I would have an hour before or an hour before, after a workout because the body is very good at extracting energy from these beige carbs, whereas it takes a lot longer to extract them from protein and from fat. So I'm gonna go and make a lot more videos for you on this subject of food and more will come out. But for now, if you want to live well forever, you need to get these macros on track because I would bet your bottom dollar that most of us are having way too many of this block here, not enough this block here. And certainly are not enough one of these because fat does not make you fat. I don't know when you were, you know, when you were a kid, you had sort of funny thoughts about things, didn't you? Like, I know a lot of us dreamt that we could dig through to the other side of the world. I always used to wonder, weirdly, why Eskimos were skinny, fit and athletic and lived on whale blubber. And why Aboriginals and Maoris were, again, fit and athletic and just lived off, you know, animal meat. And that was basically it. Um, and we'll go into more of that, but that's essentially around this whole fat thing. Fat will not make you fat. In, combina in the wrong combination with this, it's not a great addition. But on its own right, it's absolutely amazing. I'm living proof. I have about 40% of this a day to drive my energy. So uh, hopefully I'm living proof. But for now, I would recommend that you try and get your diet on this rough trend of 20, 40, 40, if it's not at the moment. The way to do it is to download my fitness pal or my plate and don't worry about analyzing anything. I'll make another video about it. Just try and put your food in there because unless you start measuring something, nothing will get done. So you need to know where you are. It's not the sort of app that you want to use forever. You'll probably only ever need it for two or three weeks because all we want to establish is where you are now. So just start chucking food in. It's a little bit tiring at first because you're going to have to select the oats for the porridge, you know, the milk that you've got on the porridge and the sugar that you're adding to it or the blueberries or whatever you choose. But they're both very intelligent apps and the next day, when you go to input breakfast, it will know or it will suggest what you've had before. So within two or three days, you will find that app a lot, lot better. And don't worry about changing anything. You know, you don't need to do that. This is not a stress thing. This is just about learning what your macros are at. I hope that's been a great help. Um, please do make any comments below. Love to hear what you think. And please share and like as well. Thanks for listening. Take care, be happy.